thanks for giving me the invitation to, to chat with you guys. And, um, we're going to spend some time together, obviously. 9 o'clock at night is when I'm kind of winding down, but you guys are in college, so 9 o'clock at night you're wide awake, correct? Yeah? So I'm going to try to make this as engaging as possible so you don't fall asleep on me. Um, TJ kind of wanted me to talk about kind of my experience. And when I think about my experience way back when, when your parents weren't even married yet, but um, when you compare then to now, there's vast differences. Okay. Um, pretty much now everybody has a cell phone, correct? Yep. And on your cell phone you can do everything, pretty much. You can shop, right? Do all of that stuff. Back then, no cell phones. Internet? Yeah? Don't grow up with it back then. You know what years I'm talking about? What years did I go to LA? <laughs> <laughs> You and me could play one v one after this. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who, anyway, that's how competitive I am. What years did I go to LIU? Sixties. Sixties? No, I'm not that old, dude. You don't know. Seventy-eight to eighty-one. Seventy-eight to eighty-one. All right. So when I compare, now you guys can watch anything on television, right? EPL, La Liga, correct? Back then, <coughs> when I grew up, I got soccer on a Sunday, and it was either the German League or the English League. And back then, it wasn't total soccer, it was direct soccer. It's like the long ball to the target man head and head. Okay? Social media, you have that now. Back then, we had to read the newspaper, to go buy the newspaper. It wasn't the social media stuff. Now, everything is instant. Yeah? Everything's instant. Back then it wasn't that instant. We had to wait. So for instance, when I communicated with the coach at LIU back then in 1977, which was Dita Ficken who recruited me here, once in a while it was a phone call, but it was pretty much handwritten letters. I don't know if TJ FaceTime you guys to, to recruit you. So there's a difference. Your experience is different to my experience. Absolutely different. I kind of went online and researched where you guys are from, and you're from all over. Some from California, some from Carolina, some from different countries. All right, what brings you here is soccer, and soccer is universal. All right, um, I'm in Miami now, and I play with actually a Brazilian team. We call them the Sao Paulo, and they argue like crazy. But the game is universal. All right, so I fit in. That's not a problem. Okay. So when I talk to you, you know, I have to understand what you're going through now, what experiences you're facing now, as opposed to what I faced back then. Okay? You can communicate with your parents now, correct? Yeah. Easily. Yeah. I had to call my mom at a particular time of the day. And I had to make sure I had enough money to pay for that phone call. All right? I was telling TJ today at lunch that I came here August 17th, 1978. It was a Thursday. I'll always remember that. There's a poem that I wrote when I was in, in the dorm. And I thought about that, but I moved so it's in storage. But there's a poem that I wrote in 1979 that I would have liked to share with you. If I find it, I may scan it and send it to TJ. What life was like back in 1979. And the bottom line, if I think, if I remember correctly, is soccer is my life. And it's always remained that. It still is my life. So, how do we connect? What makes us similar? What do you think makes us similar? Football. Huh? Football. What about football makes us similar? If it is football. The love for it. Love for it. What else? Sacrifices you make for it. Right. Something that like focus on like both. Expand on that. Expand on that. You're talking soccer wise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well if it wasn't the South East probably not be able to play at LIU. Probably would not be able to like pursue your career, wherever you play cosmos and whatnot. 
soccer gave me an opportunity to open doors and open a door at LIU. There were other doors. I chose this door. What's in common? So we're all talking about soccer, right? Football. Yeah. Nobody mentions education yet. Are we similar in terms of education? Like where you are now and when I was back there? I came here to this country to get an education and go back home and live happily ever after. Where the average temperature is about 86, 87 degrees and it's 15 minutes to the beach. And I can pick fresh fruit from the trees. That was my ambition. I'm still living in this country. Right, so the passion for the game, the sacrifices that we have to make, the educational opportunity is why you're here. I didn't come to LIU to sign a professional contract. Some of the players that I played with did that. Some players played one year, oh, what's his name? Fabio Aurelio, whatever his name is. Great goal scorer, I think he only survived one year. But his objective was to play professional. I don't know what he's doing now, I really don't. Um, but the group of guys that we had back then, the number one thing was education. And I think TJ is doing a fantastic job in terms of your grade point average, correct? Yeah, he's on you with that. You have study class and all of that? You have that? No, we didn't have that. Are you kidding me? Study class, we didn't have that back then. We had a sense of responsibility. You know, I'll tell the story, juniors across the street, I'd go to juniors like 10.30 at night. Give me a slice of cheesecake, plain cheesecake. Come back in the lobby in the, the dormitory. Who's in the, who's in the dormitory? Beautiful place. Who's in 6G? Anybody? <laughs> go walk by 6G when you're done. Um, and then I go to the, the machine, a Mountain Dew. I can't believe I drank Mountain Dew. <laughs> Slice of cheesecake, Mountain Dew, and then I'd study till like 3 in the morning. Everything was quiet. My roommate was sleeping and I'd be studying. Because education was number one. Soccer was something on the side that I had to maintain because that gave me my education. Right, so for me, standing here, giving you a message, I'll always tell you education first. Sorry, it's education first. Soccer will come, right? Some of the things that I had to go through at LIU, whew, boy. In the, in the letters that Dita Ficken wrote to me, player that played for the Greece national team, player from England, player from Germany. You guys know where I'm from? Trinidad and Tobago. How many people live in Trinidad and Tobago now? Don't look up. How many? Huh? That, that lived there from there? How many, how many people are, how, what's the population there? 1.3 million. So we're not that big. So when I see these things and I'm going, holy cow, he's got some big <coughs> players. All right? So my first day coming up here, I came over with a buddy of mine, Derek Lewis. Extremely nervous to step on the field. All right, telling Derek, hey, I don't know. I wish you well, hope you wish me well, but I don't know, I hope we can, I hope we can do this. Get on the field, sometimes it's good to be nervous, right? To use it constructively. Fortunately for us, we fell into place. At that time, I'd already played with the junior national team, and played with the senior national team, so I had tons of experience. Um, so we kind of fit in very well. After the first couple of sessions, um, at that time I lived on the fourth floor, 4L I believe. Some guys are on the fourth floor, I guess, 4K, 4K, that doesn't sound right, but. So, fourth floor, knock on the door, there was Dita Ficken, all right, kind of wanted to know if we, we needed anything else. All we had was two beds, all right, a little dresser, I think we had a couch, I wasn't sure. But he came in and said, is there anything else you needed? And we kind of gave him a list because I think he understood what he had. After my first game, the Dean of Students was there, fortunately watching my first game. After that, because I didn't get books, I didn't get a stipend for books. After that first game, I got a stipend for books. Sophomore year, moved to 6G. So soccer opened doors, right? And just that first year with us being nervous, and, and you're filming this, so I can't tell you some other things 
that happened to us. Some other people have knocked on my door. Oh, you can edit. Oh yeah. All right. So again, it was it was Derek and myself. It was a it was a one bedroom apartment, for L. So we moved to Sydney. But within the first two weeks, knock on the door, two young ladies, offering the world, <laughs> and we told them no, thank you, thank you very much, but no, thank you. Um, so you know, coming from the islands, right? Coming into the big city, the Big Apple, you know. So we kept it all focused. You know, we never gave into that nonsense. And they offered more than so what I want to get into. Um, <laughs> obviously the first winter was, was tough. All right, tough, very, very tough. Um, we were in our rooms, the heat was up, we still had on our stuff. Um, but you know, there were many nights him and I talked in terms of uh, you know, can we make this work? really had no choice, there was no going back home. I came here with $600, one suitcase. I went to the Dime Savings Bank, I didn't tell you this, across the street, and I opened a savings account. And that was it. Didn't get money from home. So I had to make that work. I did some odd jobs in school, all right, to make it work ate in the cafeteria, made friends with all the people in the cafeteria. I even had some of the dishes in my room and all that stuff. Um, a big meal for us was going to Kansas Fried Chicken. All right, getting a three piece. That was pretty cool, that was big time. <laughs> but that's the beginning. So with soccer, right, with football, you end up with a family. And hopefully this is a family here. So with soccer, what we ended up with was a family. So back then, even what I had, the guys from Germany, the guys from Greece, uh, the Jamaicans, the Barbadians, you know, the, the Brazilians, we all became one family, and we all took care of each other. And there was one Trinidadian guy that lived in, in, in Brooklyn, Royal Man, I don't know if you know Manuel, Royal Pair, but he kind of took us under his wing, and he made sure we were taken care of. <coughs> so we knew where to go in Brooklyn, when to go in Brooklyn. Obviously, there's a big Trinidadian community in Brooklyn, any Trinidadians in here? <laughs> Big Trinidadian community, so in terms of carnival and parties and all of that, right? So we were taken care of from that standpoint. So entertainment-wise, that was cool. And then we got to meet a lot of people. And then we were able to go eat here, eat there, whatever it is. Actually, and I was telling my son, we play games here, and I guess you bring out the bleachers? You still bring out the bleachers? Yeah. All right. One of the bleachers was just like a rhythm section. And you guys will know what I'm talking about. Uh, we had the music going, right? Because that was, it was sweet. I mean, bleachers were packed. Be when that game is over, before I'm done and get back to my room, my room is filled with people. People cooking, people drinking orange juice. <laughs> so it was an event, it became an event. And we had a sense of responsibility in terms of how we perform and how we want to win games. So it became nice. LIU became lively and vibrant. Um, and, you know, obviously the campus is not big. So we knew most people, people know of us. We went and supported all the basketball, the basketball. I actually had a, a baseball player who was a roommate for a point at a time and he used to chew and I hate that. And then, you, you guys suck beer? What, what is that? You squeeze the can? Any, you guys do that? Shotgun. Shotgun? That's what you got. <laughs> there you go. Shotgun? No, no, no. I guess that's what it is? Yeah. Shotgun? Yeah. Well, I, I've never seen that before, and he just kind of did it, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, whatever. <laughs> so, we supported all the teams. One of the things that we wanted to do in, on campus was have the, the, the highest grade point average, and we, we achieved that. Um, I was pretty good with accounting. I had a buddy of mine that was good with, with math. So anybody who needed help, we would help each other. And hopefully you guys do that, but we get counseling anyway. All right, so freshman year came in, did well. Um, I think we were like nine, four, and three, or something like that. Um, I had no idea in terms of All-American. I had no idea in terms of NCAA playoffs. I just knew I had a game on, on Wednesday or Saturday, and I want to win. Right, so call me ignorant, call me dumb, call me not knowing. That's what I was. I just came here to get an education and play soccer. And um, 
We ended up not getting to the NCAA. I think we went into the ECAC playoffs at that time. That's what it was. I'm not even sure if we won or lost. Um, I ended up second team All-American, which for me, I still didn't understand. What I know is that the ring is huge. In Trinidad, we do things kind of small. In the US, you do things big, like big up, and then super big up. And then when you go get a number six at Wendy's now, they want, do you want to up the size, correct? You want a medium instead of a small? And everything bigger the better. So, so the first year went relatively well. Second year was when I had a coaching change. Dieter Fekin got an opportunity at Columbia University. He moved on, um, offered for me to move. But the one thing with me, for better or for worse, is I'm very, very loyal. Extremely, extremely loyal. LIU gave me the opportunity, and I saw no reason to leave. My teammates were here, and I didn't see a reason to leave to go to Columbia University. So I was kind of dumb, wasn't I? It's a better institution. <laughs> but it, <laughs> it worked out, OK? Second year. Arnie Ramirez came in, um, different type of person. I went from a German to a Costa Rican, right? Very passionate, very intense. Um, I actually have an evaluation of my sophomore year that I, I, I will always keep. Um, I, he abused me in that evaluation. <laughs> I mean, the guy told me I can't jump, I can't hit. The only thing I can do is shoot. So, so sometimes when you get that, you have to really take it with a grain of salt and really study it. Okay, um, not everything in life is, is positive. So my sophomore year, we did okay. Um, Arnie brought in some of his troops and, and mixed the, the blend a little bit. Um, we were a unit at that time. We formed a, a kind of unit in terms of who the leaders were on the field. I don't know how you guys do it. I, you know, For me, with the teams that I coach, my captains are really the people who lead on the field. So you may wear an, arm, an armband, you're not necessarily the guy who's going to lead on the field. Can I understand what I'm saying to you? Right? Because we, I had captains behind me. Right? Those captains knew when it was time who the leaders were. Okay? So, good season. Um, got my evaluation. The one thing I didn't like about football up here or soccer up here was that they would put something to, somebody to mark you. So when I came out as a striker, I think I scored, I don't know, um, freshman year, I came 14 goals, maybe I don't know, 12, 14. But they put somebody to mark you. And that person may not be the best player, right? But they kick the shit out of him one day. And then when he got tired, you know what? He can go off, and they can bring somebody else to kick your ass. In other countries, you go off and you come back on. The first time Arnie did that to me, I think I was a sophomore, and he took me off. And I didn't realize I could go back on, and I was so pissed. And then he asked me, are you ready to go back in? And I went, what? I said, I can go back in? He said, yeah. Right. So I didn't like the idea of somebody just kicking the crap out of me. So decent sophomore year. Um, and then you get all you know all the little attention and all the little things like that in terms of all American again. And, um, the one thing I always kept was that I'm just another player on the team, and I led by example. First one on the field, most of the times. I'm from Trinidad, so once in a while I'm late. Okay, is that correct? You're always on time. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Last one to leave. Last one to leave. Whether it's running, extra shooting, stretching, shooting the breeze, right? Hanging out with your buddies, right? So, in terms of that environment that we had, you know, my dorm room, unless we're going to class, or unless we're leaving and going somewhere, that door was unlocked. Unlocked. People would walk in there, hang out, walk out. Just don't sit on my bed. I make my bed. Don't don't sit on my bed. You can do. You can play music. You can watch TV. You can eat food. You can go in for your. Don't sit on my bed. Unless I say you can sit on my bed. That was my one space. 
right? So after my, my sophomore year, um, that really kind of, the combination of Arnie kind of telling me, hey, you know, wake up. Because Arnie saw something I didn't, I didn't see. And that's something your coaches have a responsibility of telling you. You may think you're good. You may think you've arrived. But there's so much work to be done. So much. Even in college. Right? And then you, you guys do extra training and all the fitness training and all that stuff. We didn't have that. Are you kidding me? Right? We had to figure things out. So what I did for my junior year, I decided, one, if anybody was going to kick me, right, I'm going to run you into the ground. And then when you bring the other guy to mark me, I'm going to run him into the ground. So I just raised my fitness level in my junior year. And I just, I mean, I, I took no prisoners because I'm 6'1". Back then I was like 175, 176. So I can take what I can give. Right? And I'm, I'm more than willing to give. Right? So, good season. That was my best season in terms of goals. Right? 21 goals. Um, All-American stuff again. But during that period of time, you know, the first three years, you know, Scoring goals, getting assists, doing this, doing that, and still building that that team sense. Right, it was it was time for somebody else to do that. In my senior year, because we had the tools, we had strikers, we had wingers, we had Simo Ali from Barbados, we had Norman Murray, Armando Cavallo from Brazil, Dudu, right, Doc from Jamaica in midfield. So my position in my senior year was actually defensive midfield player. How many of you here can play every position on the field besides goalkeeper? You can play every position? Coach, you taking notes? Awesome. I can play any position on the field. I will not go and go. All right, so defensive mid because I had some younger players around me who had talent talent and I recognized that talent and it was my responsibility to support them plus it was my chance to dish out defensive mid can dish all right payback baby payback all right so my senior year was my best year supposedly first team all American we went to the NCAA playoffs we lost to UConn three nothing because it was like 15 degrees in Connecticut take some island boys out there, we were frozen even before the game started. I think we were down 3 nothing by 15 minutes into the game. Done. If we had won that game, we would have won the national championship because it was held in California. We were that good. We were that good. All right, so that's kind of like soccer-wise. Um, how that translates into what you guys do now, you're in the NEC, you know, you play different opponents. Um, you know, getting getting ready for the game is an assortment of so many different things. What are some of the things you think you need to do to get ready for? You normally play on the weekend and then one game during the week. How do you get ready for a game during the week? Proper sleep. Just start. Yeah, that's good. It's always a good idea. Be proactive with the classroom. Make sure you talk to everyone in the classroom. Yeah. What else? Eating right food. Eating the right food is always good. How old do you think I am? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Low ball. Low ball. Huh? Is it 28? 28? That's a wise guy over there. 50? 50? Yeah. Okay. So 58. Look, you're a little bit off. 58 years old. Yeah, you're a little bit off. So eating the right food, all right? Rest, mental preparation, rules and responsibilities, yeah. dealing with adversity. Do you study what might happen in the game and how you're going to react to that? Yeah. Do you think you have a third, uh, well, what should I call it, a final gear in you? 
I just played 140 minutes. I still a TJ. Today's still Monday, right? I'm such an Azul. Yesterday. In 70, it was what, 77 degrees? 140 minutes at 58 years old. I was losing one nothing to a team from Connecticut. I was so pissed. I ran and I ran and I ran. And we still lost. Because my body can't do <laughs> what my mind is saying. All right, what else can you do to get ready for a weekend game? I mean a weekday game. Rituals. Rituals? I think everybody has their little like thing that you have to do to prepare yourself. Good week of training. A few days you have training for the game. Play well. Camaraderie to the team. Checking in on guys, making sure they're focused. The coach has told you this before. The way you practice is the way you're going to play. You've heard that all the time. Yeah. yeah. Generally, that works. Generally. But in games, you need a moment of brilliance, a moment of execution. Yeah, generally. Yeah. You need something special. You need special players to do special things, even at the highest level. Right? School-wise, um, I took one class at 8 o'clock. It was a biology class. That was, a, that was the only class I ever took at 8. Morning or night? Morning. That was way too early for me. I was getting yeah, way too early for me. I struggled. I think I still got an 8, but I struggled in that class. And I fell asleep at times. All right. So in terms of school, it was a major, major commitment to study and maintain my grades, because I had a sense of responsibility to my parents and my siblings. I'm the youngest of six. I'm the baby. And the all did well in school ahead of me, so I had a responsibility to do well in school. So coming from a small island, I brought a lot of stuff with me. But the number one thing was education, maintain my performance on the field, because that's what gave me my education. Was it smooth, smooth sailing? No. And I was, I would think I was very challenging to Arnie. And Arnie would probably tell you that. Yeah? Because sometimes, again, I said I was late. Right? Sometimes I wouldn't listen. So him and I bumped heads to the point where he actually, I was captain one year. He actually took the captaincy away from me. Played for a couple of games, one was in Manhattan. I'm not telling these guys to do this. I'm just expressing how, what I went through. All right, took it away. Um, so had a meeting with him in the office and pretty much said, hey, this is how it is. I'm gonna continue studying. I'm gonna come to practices. I'm gonna be 110%. I'm gonna come to the end, I'm gonna be 110% because that's what I do, that's what I'm supposed to do. But you and me, only you and I, we don't need to be buddies. All right? As long as I maintain my performance on the field and follow the rules, I can't take that away from me because I want my education. None of these guys are going to go to the gala tomorrow, right? Maybe. It's assistant coaches are yeah. going to Arnie is my best friend now. Arnie, we bumped heads. But Arnie is, I'd do anything for Arnie now. Interesting now. Huh? Right, so it's not smooth. You, I'm giving you the little things about LIU, <coughs> right? Basketball game, I'm watching the women's basketball game. That was a big thing for us. We'd go to the basketball games and support the basketball games. That was a big thing on campus. Obviously, there's not much stuff to do on campus. Not like some of the other big schools. But I didn't know that. I came from the islands. This was a big school to me. All right? So we had fun. Uh, baseball, go support the baseball. Other than that, not too much entertainment. There was a Caribbean uh, association that would have little functions. The little ping pong, little table tennis, have a little dance things like that but pretty much my life was studies soccer field All right we had big rivalries Columbia University that was a huge rivalry St. Francis was a huge rivalry Hartwick Adelphi 
Fordham, Penn State. St. Louis, I think we played once. They came up here. Right? So, so through school, again, finished that. Then after my senior year, I got drafted indoors by Kansas City. I think I was number uh, two in the draft. And then outdoors, I got drafted by the Cosmos. I got drafted in the last round. Right. So we decided, what do I have to lose? I have nothing to lose. If I go to Kansas City, they pay my way. Um, all expenses paid, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. At that time, I um, kind of was talking to a guy, Alan Herman, who became my agent, who was the agent for Earl of Pearl Monroe. I don't know if anybody that knows Earl of Pearl Monroe. These guys are young bucks, man. Famous basketball player, played with the name. But anyway, so I went to Kansas City, played. At that time, there were some fantastic players playing in the league. Fantastic players, ex-professionals from abroad that came over here and the level was extremely high. So played for about a week down there, they offered me a contract and then my agent said, no, not enough. Who am I to have? Not enough. Cosmos fortunately had their preseason and their preseason was in the Bahamas. So here's a trip to the Bahamas, all expenses paid, I'm going, right? I get on the plane. Who's sitting on the plane? Johan Nieskens. Nobody knows Johan Nieskens. Wim Reisbergen. Nobody knows Wim Reisbergen. Ricky Davis. All right? The first two are guys that played for the Dutch national team in 1974 <coughs> and 1978. You know Clockwork Orange? You know the Dutch team that changed and started this total football thing? Okay, those two guys that I watched on television during the World Cup and had goosebumps. And I'm sitting next to these guys. Right, so that was pretty cool. It didn't hit me yet. I land in the Bahamas. Nice. We go to the hotel. And who's sitting at the pool smoking a cigar? Carlos Alberto and Giorgio Canale. And that's when I went, okay. I'm with the big boys. So it was pretty cool. You go to the lockery and you see the equipment manager. He gives you a whole kit. That's pretty nice. And then I go the first day of preseason, you're stretching, and we're going to do a 12 minute run. And who do I get to stretch with? Carlos Alberto, who captain the Brazilian national team in 1970. And it's the heaviest pair of legs I've ever lifted. I mean, he was seasoned. <laughs> he had, I mean, that was heavy. I mean, it was a brick. <laughs> right? But great guy, great guy, right? And actually from him, I took one thing from him, from playing with him, in terms of defending. So if I'm defending you, I don't look at the ball. I look in your eyes. So if I'm defending you, I'm not looking at the ball, I'm looking at you right in your eye. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know, I just picked it up and I, I just do it. I don't know. I don't know. He was one of the best in the huh? world. He was one of the best defenders in the world. He was amazing. He was amazing. Right? So when they busted my butt, had nothing to lose, right? If I make the team great, if I don't make the team, you know, get my education, I go back home. They offered me a contract, and who am I to turn down the New York Cosmos? So signed with them, played a couple of years, won the championship in the first year. So I was lucky to play with Carlos Alberto, Franz Beckenbauer. Lucky to play against some some great players, uh, Georgie Bess, Teofilio Cabilias, who taught me a lesson down in Fort Lauderdale. What a player. All right, good Mueller. These are guys you probably have no idea. All right, um, so did that. That started my professional career. Cosmos kind of winded down after that, so I played with them for a couple of years. Then I got an opportunity in Baltimore to play indoors. Went to Baltimore, played indoors, and then the outdoor league folded. That's when the NASL folded, and then the indoor league kind of came into prominence. Um, to make a long story short, I actually played professionally for 18 years. a lot of games it's a long time. so I'm very very fortunate to have played that long to meet so many people right played in New York played in Baltimore played in Dallas played in Harrisburg right still play now just a little bit right fortunate through the sport to be able to share what knowledge I had right obviously when you play with these teams you do camps you do clinics right because the game is not what it is now the game back then we had to go sell the game so you guys owe us no we had to go sell the game. 
Now when you drive around, there's a soccer field everywhere, correct? There's kids playing everywhere. Right? Turf fields, lights, all of that stuff. We used to go to the small parks. Grass, dirt, whatever it is to sell the game. Soccer was struggling back then. Right? We did it. So it's absolutely fantastic that the game has arrived now. Okay? So, played, got involved in, in, on the coaching side of things. I was introduced to coaching by Lincoln Phillips way back when, when I did his camps in 1984. That was my first coaching stint. Did an overnight camp. <coughs> like a U16 team and you have that team for the entire week. Right? That's the first time, I, you know, you have to do an evaluation. One guy took his evaluation, crumpled it up and threw it in the garbage. Lincoln made him go pick it up. Um, so got involved in coaching in terms of giving back to the kids, sharing what knowledge I have, what little knowledge I have, I always said, and I'm still doing it today. All right, I was lucky enough to be an assistant coach in Harrisburg and then become the head coach. So I coached professionally in those four years. Then I stepped away from it. I came back, I coached two years professionally. I gave them two years and I told them that's it. So now I'm involved with the youth side, which is extremely challenging because every parent thinks they know what's best for their child. So it's, it's very, very rewarding because I get the opportunity to come and talk to you guys. I get the opportunity to tomorrow. I get the opportunity to share my story. Right? But as I said in the beginning, my story and how it relates to your story, it's still about you're here because you came to get an education. Okay? You want to get that, that, that's your foundation, that's your base, that's who you are. That determines your future. If you are good enough, and your coach will let you know, if you are good enough to leave school and sign a professional contract before that, great for you. Absolutely fantastic. But soccer on the field is only going to last for so many years. Then what? Then what? So even if you get that contract, Make sure you finish your education. Make sure you, because that's who you are. That's your identity. That's going to be one of your strengths. All right? To be able to sit there and tell whoever wants to employ you, hey, this is how much money I want to make. To be able to demand that. On the field, you're going to have your differences. You can't tell me you don't have any differences. It's in every team. But the differences is what makes a team. You have at least one team clown. At least one, maybe two. Am I correct? <laughs> <laughs> maybe more than two. Maybe more than two. <laughs> right? You need that person to keep the team loose, all right? Come in the locker room, break the ice, relax everything. You have people on the opposite side who are extremely, extremely serious. Yeah. And you have those in between. And then you have players who, when it's game time, here we go. Right? The one thing I liked when, and I don't think at college level necessarily, you play the national anthem before every game. Uh, you do it? Okay. Back then, I don't think we did. I can't remember. But the one thing I like when I when I play professional and the professional level you play the national anthem <coughs> is when I stand and I look to my left and look to my right, I know those are the guys I want to go back with. Right? Those are my teammates. I go to war for my teammates. I'm trying to remember if we got a damn fight. I can't remember. Right? So, you want to build that team chemistry. In spite of your differences, the different culture, the different upbringing. One team, it has to be one team, one focus, one goal, one mission. And you need, I shouldn't say you need an enforcer. But you need, you need somebody who's going to set everybody straight. Not necessarily like punching them or something. You need that one person that everybody believes in. That, that can be your captain, 
that can be your emotional leader. That's the one person that keeps everybody focused and going in that direction. That could be your coach. That was me on my team. Nobody messed with me. But I would take you out in practice. So you have to build that chemistry that teamwork, that belief, that bond, that willingness to work. Right? When coach is done with you on the field, do the extra work. Do what you think you need that's going to help you in the game. Put in the extra work. Because you know what the other teams are doing? They put in the extra work. Everybody puts in the extra work. You got to do it. You got to find it. All right? In terms of things that we kind of did together as a team. Boy, we partied together in my room <laughs> to build a bond. Um, you know, I, I know you guys do things here. Like I saw some guys with security, oh, you guys security tonight or event staff, staff or something? Event staff, they look good in yellow. No problem. You know, we did things, you know, I, I talked about really, you didn't want me to mention my hot dogs and my soda at the basketball games. But for, we had to raise money, the soccer team. You guys get more money than we did. So we, we would go sell hot dogs and soda at the basketball games. A lot of girls would come buy hot dogs and soda. That was pretty cool. Right. But we tried to do as many things together as a group, as a team, okay? Hang out together, all right? We'd come together before games at times and go eat. All right, but that the, the nucleus of the team pretty much hung out in my room. That was it. I know you guys are going to do things, but anything that you can do together is going to help you. It's going to absolutely bring you together. I've played on many, many different teams. I've seen many styles of coaching. I've run through many different personalities. The most successful teams that I've been on are teams. Believe in each other, trust in each other, willing to put the work in. And know how to have a good time. When it's time to have a good time, we knew how to have a good time. But when it's time to kick ass, it was time to kick ass. Right? I had um, my, my freshman year, my freshman year, first year as a professional with Giorgio Canavia. Anybody knows Giorgio? You know Giorgio's personality. What's his personality? He's like, he's like the Ibrahimovic of the 80s. He's all about scoring the goals and it was all about Giorgio. It's all about Giorgio, baby. It's all about Giorgio. So my first preseason game we play in the Rose Bowl in California, we play against the team from Mexico. And I started the game, I'm playing, first half, I get a ball, boom, I shoot, hit the post. <laughs> playing again, get another one, hit the post. Hit the post twice. Half time, so I go into the locker room, I'm pissed as shit, you know. Giorgio comes over to my locker, rips me rips me, kills me, right? Accusing me of wanting to be some, are you trying to be a hero? What? So after Giorgio rips me and leaves, coach comes over and says, take your shoes off, you're done. That's after I hit two posts, playing well, but Giorgio was pissed. Because maybe he didn't hit the post, so I didn't give him the ball. Right? So, we go through the rest of preseason. The last game is up in Vancouver. So fortunately, well obviously I sat the other two games and then the final <coughs> game I get. I ran in that game from the first whistle to the last whistle. Who came to me after the game and complimented me? Georgie. And then we were okay after that. I could have gone the other way, correct? 
George, you could have gone the other way too, right? So you're gonna bump heads, we're gonna bump heads, but maybe he wanted me, he wanted to see how much I'm willing to work. I have another story with Bogey. I don't know if you guys know Bogicevic. Bogicevic is another one, Yugoslavian captain, the national team, played in the World Cup. Um, Bogey, left-footed player, brilliant play, absolutely brilliant. Um, 6'2", 180, didn't like to run too much, right? So we're playing at Giant Stadium, I get a ball, I play to bogey, but it's about maybe one foot a little bit wide from his left foot, and he decided not to go for it. <laughs> so he does this and he turns to the coach. <laughs> so I say, oh, okay, so I play, we play the whole game. Now when you go in the locker room in Giant Stadium, there's really, you know, we call it like there's really two sections to your locker room. There's one section where the guys who made all the money over there. The Beckenbauers, the Carlos Alberto, the Giorgio, the Rice Bourbon. And then the guys who made okay money were over here. The regular guys, bogeys over there. So I'm pissed as shit after the game. I actually walk over to bogey. And I kind of rip bogey. I laid into bogey. Needless to say, I don't know how many games I sat out after that and can't remember, <laughs> all right? So, at least I got it off my chest. Bogey and me after that, very good, no problem. But you can't disrespect me like that on the field. I really don't care. And one of the things we used to do, we used to scrimmage the Cosmos back then. I think we played that three times at the Giants Stadium. We'd always lose, but I'd always score. Slightly better than we were, and extremely better than we were. All right. So you have to find that 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 chemistry within yourself, and then you have that balance of freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Obviously, the seniors are more comfortable. The freshman is like it's a new thing for you. Yeah, new thing for you. Most of you come from club teams. A lot of you come from club teams, club coaches, club environment. It's a little different here. You know, fortunately for me, coming in, I had international <coughs> experience. How many of you have international experience? Yeah, that helps a lot. That helps a lot. All right, are you comfortable? You're comfortable? Wrong answer, man. You should never be comfortable. There's always work to be done. Probably a little content. Well, this is kind of your whole season. All right? You had practice today, a little kick around? I missed it. Maybe no kick around tomorrow? Dang. Kind of wanted to see you guys. You may have to come in the fall and see this. All right? So, finished in uh, 2000 and pretty much 2001. I think I, I played professionally until I was 41 years old. And it was my best season. I played every game. All right, I was an all-star. But decided to retire after that. So if you can play the 41, it's awesome. It's a lot of ice bags along the way, though. Tons and tons of ice bags. Keeps me going. My first <clears throat> um, cold dip was here. It was 52 degrees. Dr. Turner put me in the. You guys do that? The ice bath? Yeah. 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 The heck with that. I'm going to the beach. <laughs> I'm back the ice bath. All right. So that's pretty much me in a nutshell. You know, I'd like to kind of open it up for questions because I kind of like to hear where you are and what are the things you're interested in. TJ wanted me to do some pictures and stuff. I'd bring you one with the fro. My fro wasn't as big as yours, but <laughs> I had the fro. Yeah. 